And today's episode of the Rebrand Review, we're going to be jumping into the world of espresso. And we're going to be diving into the world of story as a brand. I'm Tony Hartley, founder and director of Canny Creative. I'm Glenn Millen, creative director here at Canny. And today we're talking about Story, which is an espresso shop in Sydney, Australia, who had their rebrand done a, a while ago by Sydney based For The People. The branding, this is one of my favorite brands that, I've, that has come out in the yeah. last five years. It is very different and I think it works really well. So Story, like I say, are an espresso shop. They've designed up this monster character who watches over everything. They, every story's got a villain or a monster or a bad guy, but this guy is looking over things and it represents like the great unknown of stories. He's, he's, he's very obviously a monster, yeah. but he's mysterious. Yeah, and I think, I think he's very, very minimal to the point where, as you say, he doesn't really have any features. He just has these little horns and then two eyes and that's it. And I think it sort of speaks to, not so well, long time ago, obviously a lot of people had characters in their logos. They were very 3D, they were very shadowy. Horrible um, clip art. Yeah, clip art characters where it, that seems to have totally disappeared. But now, th now a lot more brands seem to be bringing back characters, but just in a very simple and basic way. Yeah, so recently MailChimp, MailChimp yeah. have obviously used the chimp guy from the start. Yeah. But MailChimp's doing it, Realm we covered yeah. on the Rebrand Review not long ago, they're doing it, yeah. this story Espresso in Australia are doing it, yeah. obviously the smaller businesses can get more creative but it's just, it's kind of nice to see like this the, whole character yeah. trend happen mm -hmm. again. Definitely. So, how can you not like the monster first mm -hmm. of all, nothing to dislike, I actually quite like that he doesn't have a facial feature, yeah. you can't tell if he's a good guy, a bad guy, if he's laughing, if he's happy or sad, yeah. which is kind of cool because it, it lets you work up the story in your own mind. Yeah, yeah, it allows your imagination to run. Yeah, it does, and the logo of the monster itself is really, when they lay it out, it's really quite detached from the typography, yeah. normally you put the logos right up together, it's really detached, but they use the type separate to the oval monster, Yeah, and, and really the whole brand though hangs on the copywriting and the language they use so yeah. the visuals are super simple they're really effective but what they do is every touch point has a story on it no matter yeah. how big or how small they've got stories everywhere yeah so like even from the business cards they've got these tiny essentially three line stories yeah. that really are just quite quirky and quite nice i mean just to read one out in yeah. the fashion of storytelling this business card has Richie Chai. He was destined for a future in hot beverages. It's one. It's a one-sentence story, but and I'm not gonna lie. If that isn't the most standout business card you've heard of, with that little story on, I don't know what. I is. just want to see the rest of them. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. gonna go to Sydney and collect those business yeah, cards. Yeah. Definitely. At the same rate, I'm collecting clients in Sydney. Yeah. We're going to collect them all. Yeah. And no matter the touch point, there's stories everywhere from business cards to coffee cups to coffee bean bags. And honestly, fucking love it. Yeah, it is amazing. I mean, they've got a type of language there again that just rolls on like the storytelling. It's a little bit more adventurous where it's not just right like, corporate spiel. No. Nah. It's just, it really goes on it. It's another brand again leading with language. Like, yeah. A lot yeah. of brands are starting to do it these days. But, the language, the tone of voice, the, everything is starting to be told through yeah, words. There is other things than just graphics. There's devices yeah. that you can build your brand on. 100%. Talking about the colours, they might be dangerously close to trendy. Like they're almost verging on that bloody eBay colour palette again, but they've somehow went to the line and they went, nope, we're coming away from that, which is lovely. But again, the thing I pointed out to you, when you see the actual shop and the actual like place where they've done it, all of it tends to be white and black. Yeah. Um, and it's just, they totally ditched the colors. And it'll be quite nice to see if they had like that white and black interior, and then they bring in all these colors for I all think, the different stories. I think that's exactly what they, they do. And the exterior of the shop is white, black, it's very minimal, but then the cups, the loyalty cards, yeah. everything you get inside the shop is bright and colorful. And I think it's like, when there's a story, there's a color. It's, again, it's almost as if it's like 
this is all blank canvas. When you pick up these elements, this is when the story started. Yeah, and like unfold. that's where the imagination, all the colours, the, the the adventurous nature of it comes in. One thing to just point out and flag for the video is the loyalty cards. Just they look awesome, and I yeah. need that little monster stamp. Yeah, and I have to send good. off an email to Story and see if they can send us some stuff over. Yeah. In summary, this to me is, this has been a short episode of Rebrand Review because there's really not a lot to tear down. It's a fantastic brand. It's a fantastic like execution. They yeah. use stories for everything. The strategy of using storytelling takes precedent over using visuals. It's, there's just nothing to dislike. Yeah, there really isn't. No, I just, as I say, hope we're in Sydney soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to get over there. And it's get some simple, coffee. it's effective, and it's unforgettable. And I hope, I hope they, I honestly hope they do a Starbucks and there's one everywhere. Yeah. Imagine definitely. that. Imagine they start using stories about different places. Yeah. And then they're that like, that builds up, they'd use different monsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That there's a lot of scope. Ah, I want to build this brand. Well done to, for the people in Sydney, Australia. It's, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Hard not to just go and give it five out of five out of five for everything. The thinking and concept though, stories over visuals, big old five. Yeah, visual representation, we've already mentioned this. Big old five again. Brand mark, yeah, the monster, it's cool. I'm, I'm only knocking it down one point because again, like, like with Realm, is there much else except two eyes on a monster shape? Yeah. Again, this might get upgraded to a five in the future, but for now, brand mark of a four. Typography, we went with a five. I think this works really well with the way they tell the stories and the brand, the typography that they've used for that, a nice serif font and some sans serif font. Well, it looks like well. a storybook type, yeah. and you can't, can't fault that. Yeah. Color palette, I'm only giving this a four, but simply because they went to the line of dangerous and kind of came away from it, I think they could have easily lapsed into. Horrible, we had colour territory. We're going to have to swap this round, uh, swap this round uh, in a little bit because you always get the colour palettes and you hate them. So. <laughs> I like my brands to be black and white. <laughs> <laughs> in total, for story, for, for the people, it's a big 4.6 out of 5. It's an excellent job and I hope we can visit Sydney soon. Yeah. I've been Tony Hardy. I've been Glenn Millen. This has been the Rebrand Review. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe below. We'll see you next time.